The island of Madagascar lies off the southeast coast of Africa, across the Mozambique Channel. It has been separated from Africa since the age of the dinosaurs. Thus, most of the pre-human, non-flying mammals who arrived here, across 300 kilometers of open water, must have rafted across on mats of vegetation. They include the ancestors of weasel-like carnivores, rodents, insectivores, a pygmy hippo, and the lemurs. Almost all of the native species in plants and animals are indigenous to Madagascar. There are 28 bat species, of which nine evolved here. These fruit bats are the largest bat species, and they compete with the lemurs for food. From the lemur ancestors, about 45 species, large and small, in 20 genera, evolved to fill both diurnal, or day-living, and nocturnal niches. The two lemur species presented in this video are diurnal forms from the largest family of lemurs still remaining, the Andreidae. These are two of the three remaining species of the genus Propithecus, commonly called the Shafak, which is an arboreal form found in areas of both wet and dry forest around the coast of Madagascar. This particular form is Propithecus diadema, or the diadem Shafak. They live in an area of dense rainforest on the southeastern side of Madagascar. They are very rare animals, and as of 1990, there were none in captivity. These particular animals in Romanofana National Park are currently being studied by Duke University, which specializes in research on lemurs in both the wild and captivity. The different colored collars on the animals help the researchers distinguish the individuals. Shafak share a very unusual morphology of very long hind legs and short forelegs with a number of other lemur types. This allows them to locomote in a pattern called vertical clinging and leaping, in which the animal clings to a vertical tree trunk, then pushes off with its long, strong hind legs and flies through the air to another vertical support, sometimes as much as seven or eight meters away. This rapid non-terrestrial type of locomotion makes them very difficult for predators to catch. Other than humans, there are only a few predators such as the weasel-like fush, some hawks, and others which can take young animals. Bones of an extinct eagle have recently been found, which may have been a danger to the adults, but the mature weight of five to six kilograms is larger than most hawks can manage. The forest area of Romanofana is a dense wet rainforest with an abundance of leaves and fruit. Even so, diadem safak live in small groups of four to eight animals with one male and two to three females and their juveniles and infants. It is possible that their numbers have been seriously reduced by extensive hunting by humans. Another major problem is the clearing of 40,000 hectares of forest per year for agriculture, which has made serious inroads into their habitat. This group is this Edwards subspecies, distinguished from the three others by the large white girdle of fur around its mid-body. The density of these animals is about four per kilometer squared, as compared with 100 to 200 brown or ringtail lemurs per square kilometer in rich areas of habitat. Home ranges of the few groups studied vary from 100 to 250 hectares, with a mean daily travel length of 670 to 1260 meters. This low density means there is very little overlap between groups. Their diet is quite varied, depending partly on the time of year. In June to September, when the females are lactating, they eat 58% leaves, 28% fruit, and 14% flowers, but they tend to eat more fruit in the wet season. They may eat as many as 17 to 27 plant species per day and travel and feed at all heights, including on the ground. In order to reach tender leaves at the ends of branches, they frequently stretch out their long hind legs and reach their hands to the branch ends, bending them to their mouths to pick off leaves or fruit. Once the fruit is picked with the mouth, it is frequently held and manipulated with the hands. The intestines have a large cecum, which is a specialized chamber with microflora, which helps digest the cellulose in leaves and increases the amount of nutrients available to the body. In the breeding season of January to February, 